Okay, firing in three, two. So as you probably could guess from the name of the video, I combined a paintball gun with a Nerf blaster. The uh, two guns I use, as you can see here, the paintball gun was the uh, ER2. Uh, I don't know if it's pronounced ER squared. I don't know. It's the cheap paintball gun. I think I've seen them at Walmart for like you know, 25 or 30 bucks. And the Nerf Maverick. And I actually got both of these at um, a thrift shop, or actually a flea market, for like five bucks each. And for like five bucks each, you can't afford to not do something like this. Um, of course, first starting into this, I had no idea if this would actually work or not. But again, for for 10 bucks total for these two things, I, I figured it'd be worth a try. Uh, this picture, you could actually see they're, they're, the, the halves are separated. I already started taking it apart. Unfortunately, when I made this, I wasn't thinking about making a YouTube video. So this isn't really going to be a step-by-step -step, um, video here. But we'll take a look at the two pictures I did take while I was making this. And then after the pictures, we'll uh, take the thing apart and I'll point out some more uh, some more things that uh, that I had to do to get this thing to work properly. So after disassembly, the first step was to cut them apart and uh, start fitting them together. Here you can see where I cut each one in half and started uh, fitting them together. Uh, after this uh, picture here, we'll go ahead and take the take the unit apart and I'll explain how we got each part to work, um, how I got the cocking mechanism to work, the trigger pull to work. Um, but basically combining the, the two units together, on the inside I did a combination of using uh, epoxy and um, using a heat gun to try to uh, plastic weld them together, which actually worked pretty well. On the other side I actually put down a layer of fiberglass and resin, sanded that smooth, and then used Bondo uh, to, to smooth it all together and uh, to blend it all in. And so let's go ahead and... Uh, look at the finished product taken apart, and we'll we'll see how everything works. Oh, also, while I had it apart, I removed the air restrictors in the barrel. Um, that's a simple matter of just popping the barrel apart and pulling out the little springs and restrictors and valves inside of the, the barrel part. Unfortunately, I didn't really get any pictures of that, but uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos showing people removing the air restrictors. Um, but anyways, like I said, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the finished product uh, taken apart and see how it all works. All right, so I got all the screws out, and a couple of things to point out before I crack it open is that the screws are on different sides. The screws for the Maverick are on this side. The screws for the paintball gun are on this side, which isn't a big deal, but uh, just, yeah, whatever. And once I got the two halves epoxied together on the inside, on the outside, I basically just covered the seam with uh, Bondo and sanded it smooth just to kind of blend it in so it's a little difficult to tell. Uh, where the actual seam line is. Yeah, it's not perfect yet. I, I could do a little bit more sanding and filling on it. And, and this is just black primer that I have on it now. I have a lot of ideas on how I want to paint it, and I can't make up my mind on the paint scheme I want for it, so I just shot it in flat black primer until I could f figure out how I wanted to paint it. And I kind of like the look of just the flat black. I might actually just leave it like that for now. Also, important to note that I am all out of orange tape and orange paint and orange markers so you know that tip I'll have to make that orange somehow in the future to make it you know I guess perfectly legal or whatever but yeah just don't comment that the tip should be orange I do know that I just don't have anything right now so okay so the screws are out if we crack the case open and we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, on this side we can see here uh, where I have heat welded it together here looks like crap but it works then right in here filled out with epoxy went over the areas here with epoxy and some more areas here with epoxy I said earlier that I had to cut out some material for the trigger to slide and that's all this uh, right in here there's some support webbing inside of the structure of the paintball gun so I had to go in and grind all that out so the trigger would slide properly also the screw hole here I had to shave the sides down because the trigger actually has a slot that rides over top of that and uh, basically it's just a matter of cutting, trying to move the trigger, and, uh, and then cutting out what was required until the trigger uh, moved, moved freely. And I basically just use a Dremel tool to grind that out. Uh, this epoxy that I'm using, uh, you notice it's a green color. 
that epoxy I'm using is actually, I'm actually almost out of this stuff. Um, it is, if I can find it here, here's, this is old. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost gone. It's, uh, yeah, 1838 by 3M Scotch Weld, 1838. And it's a two part mix. And this stuff is really expensive. Uh, I did, a while ago, I looked online to see about getting some new stuff here. And if I remember right, it was about, I don't know, 60 or 80 bucks for this. Uh, which, yeah, that's more than I can afford. I just happened to get this from work. We had a project at work we needed it for, and it was left over. And and um, it's it's probably several years expired right now, but it still works great. I mean, this stuff is, is incredible. It's probably some of the best epoxy I've ever used as far as strength and, and toughness, and it, it sticks to just about everything. But um, anyway, so that's almost out. I've got to figure out how to get some more. Uh, cheaply. All right, so again, when I when I assembled these, I laid the two halves flat this way, tack glued it, flipped it over, welded the plastic, put epoxy in it, and then once that was all set, I went in and sanded down and then added Bondo, sanded it back smooth. Uh, the biggest area, the biggest gap, was actually right in here. That was about the only spot that didn't quite line up very well. That took the most Bondo. And then once I had one side done, I took the other pieces and I screwed them on and then glued them together, then took them off and filled them in as I explained earlier. That way it would guarantee all the bolt holes would, uh, or the screw holes would line up properly. All right, uh, the next part, right here. So obviously this is the mechanism for the paintball. Uh, the CO2 cartridge fits in here. And of course we have the uh, the plug here screws that in and the way this works is uh, remember I talked about the caulking mechanism and on the Maverick it was it was actually up here and on the paintball gun it was down here so my first thought was to put the the part from the Maverick up here but it just it didn't fit right and it would have been more trouble and it was worth to try to make it fit so all I did was this is the part this black plastic piece here this is the part that actually uh, cox or, or cox the mechanism here and this had a section that went down and forward and I for the paintball gun caulking mechanism I just cut that off then on the other side on the other side I just uh, see if I can flip this without losing everything I just drilled a hole in it and threaded it for a uh, for a screw or a bolt here and then I cut a slot in the side handle here for that to, for that to move through and I basically just pull that uh, bolt back uh, to cock it. As we can see here, I'll just pull that back. You see we pull that back and there's another spring inside of here. So when you pull that back, it grabs that metal weight and then moves forward. And I put this little spring here to pull it back forward. And then to activate this, I added this little piece of aluminum. It was a piece of aluminum angle that I cut to the right shape. And so now when you pull the trigger back, that trigger turns the barrel through the barrel turning mechanism here and you got to make sure that it turns the barrel first before it releases the trigger of the paintball so you pull the trigger it turns the barrel and then it rides up on that ramp to release the mechanism for the uh, paintball release and this little piece of uh, metal here again it just it was a piece of aluminum angle and i just screwed it into a post that just happened to be there don't remember exactly what that was for originally, but uh, fit on there. And this tab sticking up where my finger is, that will press here to release to allow that to fly back. And again, the ramp here is just caught by that part of the trigger. And there's a spring for the trigger uh, right under right under the trigger, uh, right under there. I don't know if you can see that or not, um, but there's a spring right under there to pull the trigger back. Now, as far as delivering the blast of uh, CO2 down towards the barrel, I ran that through this piece here. This was original to the Maverick, and I uh, that was part of the barrel. I cut that apart, and then I just added, this is a piece of styrene plastic that I carved to just kind of funnel the, uh, the um, CO2 blast into this portion and then through to the dart. 
So it took a while to figure all this out, but it actually works uh, pretty well. With the exception of the Mavericks, I didn't know this when I started, but the Mavericks have a problem with the barrel turning mechanism here. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already know that. I was not familiar with the Maverick when I started this. A friend of mine at work is the one that told me that. He said he has about five or six of these things. They all have the same problem. So when I first started firing this, it seemed like every third or fourth pull just did not want to rotate the barrel. So I was trying to modify this and fix this. I thought maybe I messed it up or I did something wrong. And then uh, come to find out, that's, I guess, normal for the Mavericks. Um, but if you pull the trigger kind of slowly and you see that it starts rotating it before you finally pull it to release it, then it actually uh, works pretty well. All right. Um, can't think of any other issues here to, to go over. It's, um, you know, it took a lot of time figuring out how to put everything together. If you, uh, if you guys decide to do this yourself, uh, now you have a, a heads up on how to make the release mechanism work here, how to make the cocking mechanism, and, um, and how, to, how to fit them and get it to work. That is, if I didn't have a patent on this, you could do that, which I don't, but whatever. Um, so, have fun, knock yourself out, and uh, I'll put this back together, and I'll do a few more firings of it uh, towards the end of this video. I'll, I'll shoot a few more darts out of it. Now, it does have one major drawback, though, one big problem that I didn't realize when I did this, and that is, um, you know, the, the blast from this is just, the, the video just does not do it justice. It, uh, it's much more, you know, powerful and louder and exciting in person than on the video and typically when you fire a dart out of here the dart comes out in about two or three pieces i mean it, it shreds the dart so we figured out that if you wrap a uh, layer of clear packaging tape around the dart that'll kind of help prevent that um i 3d printed a rubber dart that worked but it just didn't come out with the same speed because it was much heavier than a normal nerf dart but uh, just keep that in mind. If you do do this, um, yeah, I know I said doo-doo. Um, sorry. If you do do this, then uh, just keep in mind that it will probably destroy your darts. Unless you figure out a way to tone it down. Maybe if I cut some ports in the side of this so some of the blast is wasted and, uh, and then the rest of the blast uh, goes to, to throw out the Nerf dart without shredding it. I don't know. But anyways. Um... Let me get this back together and we'll do a few more firings with it. All right, so I got it all put back together again and uh, got it loaded up here. So we'll try this out. Ready? And two, three, one. The barrel seems to be rotating all right. I didn't think there's a window right in front of me. I don't want to hit that. Don't know if it would break it or not, but I don't want to find out either. Yeah, that was the uh, one of the dart tips. Actually, I think they're all shredding as they're coming out. No, oh, that was it. So, anyways, I'm all out of darts. And uh, actually, that's a good YouTube channel. You should check that out if you haven't heard of that one. All out of darts. He's got some good stuff. And so uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I have to go to Toys R Us and buy my son some new darts because I think I pretty much uh, destroyed them all. So until next time. Later.